in Buddhism, there are two strands or two branches of practice, I guess. One is Pariyati, which is the, 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 the scholar, the scholarly, the scholarly way or the study way, studying texts, studying language, study, 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 right? In terms of intellectual study. Then there's the Patibhata, which is the kind of practice way where one, instead of one reading um, all the time, or doing research of that matter of that kind one researches oneself one sits under the tree sits in an abandoned place <clears throat> sits in a kuti sits in a sala sits in a quiet place and meditates practices and actually develops and cultivates the noble eightfold path of these two i would say they're both important but of the two i would say the patibhata is more important because it's the one that the Buddha talks about in the text that uh, he talks about a lot when you read the suttas the monk comes back from the meal sits cross-legged uh, if you've read the if you read the discourses you know what I'm talking about so in other words the uh, the Buddha encouraged us to sit down and practice right to, to practice and to cultivate and develop now that part <clears throat> is really really important Okay, and uh, there are still many teachers in the Sangha who are renowned for their, for their great practice and they're renowned for their, for their uh, staunch discipline and their austerities and their sacrifices. And uh, the, books, the books are good, but what I've found in my, uh, <clears throat> in my travels is a lot of the big teachers, a lot of the, the really big uh, famous teachers and when I say that, I say that in amongst monks in Dhamma Yut tradition here in Thailand. A lot of them try to close the library and stop the monks reading. And they tell the monks to start focusing on Buddha, focus, uh, focusing on uh, Anapanasati, you know, this awareness of the, the breath, <clears throat> the in and out breath, and start practicing that way and doing meditation walking and and focusing on developing 24 hours sati or 24 hour awareness a lot of the uh what we call kubai jans or the or the teachers uh in in my tradition talk about less reading and more practice and i think that that uh in the end that's what's going to give you the result that you're looking for they lean to however you know we're not all the same um everybody is unique and everybody has different ways um, there's, you know, different methods, I guess. And, you know, reading, reading is fine, but we also have to understand that in the scholarly world of Buddhism, there's always been back and forth and disagreement. Still is today about texts, about rules, um, about authenticity, all these kind of things, right? So you can get into that whole world and start arguing about authenticity, which rules are the right rules, who wrote the pure text, who wrote the correct text, who wrote which one, Mahayana, is it Theravada, is it Mahayana doctrine, all this kind of thing. Or you can just sit down and meditate and work it out yourself. And quite honestly, that's the way I, that's the way I roll. I read from time to time, but I practice more because I find that the answers come from, see, one thing that a lot of the big meditation teachers teach is that the book is here. The book is the body. The book is your mind, what's going on. The feel, feelings are a book. If you study your feelings, they're a book. Perceptions are a book. <clears throat> Consciousness, massive book, right? The body, a massive book, right? Fabrications, just knowing what fabrications are. You know, the creations, you know, always creating, always creating. Creating because we think there's a self, right? Uh, when we study a vijapachaya sankara, for example, a vijapachaya or the condition of ignorance in terms of dependent origination, that is an entire book on its own. You don't really need to read up on that anymore. Once you understand a vijapachaya, then you reflect on it and that can give you mountains and mountains of information just from looking at that subject during uh, meditation or reflection, daily reflection. So I think... It's better out of the two, be a scholar, be a practitioner, I think, but be both. Be both. I think both 
uh, are, are important. I, th I think it's better to be both. Uh, but if you were to, if I was to choose which one, um, which one would be more bet would yield to better results for the person, I would say the practitioner, because once you you, you read a little bit, but the, the important thing is Buddhism um, has taken the form of text only in a lot of circles, particularly in the West. Uh, but reality is is that the sangha has a verbal tradition. There's also a, a, something to be said when you're sitting with a group of monks or sitting in a group of, pe of practitioners. There's a lot of information that's exchanged. There's a lot of things that uh, you, know, you can get off other people. Uh, a lot of things that you just can't get in, in books, right? And the danger of books is the perception, is, 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 the bias, uh, is the bias perception. It's hard to be objective all the time. It's hard to be objective all the time. So sometimes the problem with uh, when, when we read and we try to fit it in with our rationales to rationale certain behaviours rather than, than conquer the behaviour. Or sometimes we, we, uh, we, read, to, we read and we, and we want to, uh, I guess, uh, argue for <clears throat> our shortcomings, right? Because sometimes when we read, it's objective. But when a teacher tells you you're being selfish or you know, you're being lazy or you get that from uh, a fellow monk or a fellow practitioner, uh, you get that certain jolt, that person tells you from a place of, of wisdom, it's, it's, it, it helps a lot, you know. So I think the practitioner part, I've talked about this uh, throughout the videos, throughout my videos, but I think the most important thing to take away is <clears throat> I'm not saying don't read. I'm saying practice as well. I've already said this as well, but make sure you practice. Make sure you balance it up, okay? Make sure you sit there and, and you practice because you need to find <clears throat> the true nature by yourself. You need to know your mind yourself. You need to know yourself. Uh, no one can really do that for you. There's no point always looking uh, to books or looking to other people for guidance all the time if you're not doing the work yourself. I mean, it's great. Uh, it would have been great to have the Buddha here today, uh, I guess, in, in terms of the physical Buddha. Uh, you know, but the Buddha did say, if you see the Dharma, you see the Buddha, right? So the idea is that uh, the practice uh, is where the yield comes from, is where the profit comes from. And to know oneself, one has to dive deep and understand what, what the human apparatus is to, as, as like a fundamental before we can get into or, you know, get into not-self or the discussion of impermanence or this discussion of dukkha. I mean, these three things here, anicca, dukkham, anatta, right? Impermanence, dukkang, right? Dukkang I won't translate, uh, anatta, not-self. Those three things there are just a thesis on its own. How much more do you want to read? If you look at phenomena, right, and you look at the body and you look at the five aggregates as anicca, dukkham, anatta, right there, you have a whole lot of study to do. You don't need a book to study that. And that'll take you quite some time. Well, again, based on my normalness and my not so so greatness, it's taken me a long time and I'm still there. I guess there are much better people than me out there um, and maybe it'll be quicker for you. But for the rest of us, normal average Joe kind of people, you know, just the Anicca Dukkha Anatta, the Tilakana Doctrine, the Tilakana Doctrine, right? The three aspects that alone like if you were to sit in meditation and you start to be pasana right you look at the body right and you look at the anicca dukkham anatta aspect of that then you look at feelings and you look at the anicca dukkham anatta aspect of that then you look at perceptions and memories and the anicca dukkham anatta of that right and you have a look at sankharas right uh, fabrications and you look at the perspective, you look at the anicca, dukkham, anatta of that. And then you look at consciousness itself. Because consciousness is just part of, uh, is, is part of the body. It's not, the citta, the citta is not consciousness. Consciousness is part of the human condition. And again, this even this one gets confused a lot in the text as well. But see, this is what I mean. There's a lot of things that's confusing in the texts. And so... The idea is to clarify it within oneself through self-study, self-experience, right? 
the last thing I'll say on this is, for example, like uh, when we look at uh, a lot of arguments in the scholarly world, particularly over the rules, the rules are always a hotspot for arguments. So just to put it out there and how I travel with the rules and why I decided to follow the Theravadan, uh, the Theravadan uh, discipline, the code, is because <clears throat> I looked at certain teachers and I looked at their qualities and what I revere in them. And I feel that the teachers that I follow, for me, reveal certain qualities that are rare and things that I aspire to. So <clears throat> for, the, for me, one of the one of the sell, one of the selling points of following this tradition and these rules is because I saw the qualities I I myself uh, aspire to in some of these teachers and they follow that tradition they follow those rules so that's why I decided along with other reasons which I won't mention here uh, to follow these rules as well it's not because of what the books say it's not just the books it's what the teachers say what certain how the teachers behave and what they follow too. It's, it's, it's no different if you walk into a gym or you walk in, you, know, you, you want to learn martial arts or you want to learn tennis, how to play tennis, for example, and you see someone hitting in a certain way or playing in a certain way and you say, gee, you know, I'd like to be able to do that, right? Whatever the books say, whatever everybody else is saying, it's, it's of no interest. What you'll do is probably seek that person out and say, hey, you know, can you teach me? And the person will say, you hit the forearm like this. And another teacher will say, no, no, that's nonsense. You hit it like that. But no, I want to hit like that. So you have to learn off that person that way, if you know what I mean. So that's how I travel a lot in, in with, with how I try to balance the study plus the practice is that I, I, the people I get my guidance from, the, my, the teachers I get my guidance from, uh, I believe I've chosen well and I believe that they have the qualities that I aspire to. So when I talk about text to them or I talk about issues, they can clarify their points of view on the text. And that's how I, uh, that's how I work through this whole scholarly thing. I don't like to get into arguments about <clears throat> whether the Buddhist texts are authentic or not authentic, which, which text is authentic and non-authentic, non which is pure, which is not pure, and all that kind of stuff. It's a never-ending debate. I think, for me... Uh, one final blow to this, I think the books are all there, the books are all written as guides, there's guidelines, they give you the idea, and I don't take it any further than that. Having studied a lot myself, having written a book myself on a practical subject, I know the difficulties in writing a book and trying to make sure that the person is going to understand what you're saying, uh, whether the person's going to be objective or subjective in their bias, whether they're going to be able to apply it, whether they're going to whether they're going to be able to understand it, uh, every aspect of the book. And I don't think that that's feasible nor realistic, right? And also, uh, you know, the perception change is, uh, is, is always tricky when, when we're reading a text that stays the same, but your perception is changing all the time. I guess that can be helpful sometimes. That can be helpful sometimes. But, but at the same time, the practice, it's right, chitta is right here. The truth is right here. The book's right here. What do I need to send, go through the eyes, go through the eyes, make contact with, you know, an object out there to get the truth from that object? See, even that, even that for me is questionable. But in terms of rules, in terms of uh, worldly organization, that's where the books do come in handy. For worldly organization is a different thing to practice. For example, uh, how to assemble, how to sit together, uh, what size the robes should be, what size the... The, the living quarters should be, uh, how that should be. Yeah, that's where the texts do come in handy, but that's just stuff. But when it comes to the the knowledge part, the knowledge part, that comes from oneself. You can read all you like, but that comes from oneself. You know, <clears throat> I had the fortunate luck. I was fortunate to have um, my father, and my father left school when he was 11, and he worked... Uh, on building sites from that age. A lot of people from that age, uh, from that era, uh, didn't go to school, right? My dad left and he said, oh, school is for the privileged Italians at the time, right? The privileged people. Okay, so dad worked and he, and he worked a good lot of years. He retired in his 70s from the age of 11. But he could basically build anything. He, he read some books on the side 
but he just worked hard and he could do things that not many people could do even in today's standards right but not just my father there's many like him right so the the thing is the books the books are handy for a reason but i think books are more there are better for protocol than they are for describing practice but that's just my opinion that's just my opinion you, you can have your opinion again my caveat my clause because this always gets misunderstood read books if you want to i'm not saying don't read them but just understand yeah, my my meditation teacher, my 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 big Kahuna teacher, the one that I follow, uh, th uh, in the terms of the in the Patibata, he he locks the he locks the library and only allows monks to visit the library an hour a day. That's it, and he closes it the rest of the time. And he tells everybody at that monastery there's a minimum of six hours sitting practice every day, right? So something to be said and so I follow this I follow that way because that teacher is someone I esteem to so you know that's my opinion on this matter you may have different opinions and that's fine I'm not trying to tell you what to do but the most important thing you know know yourself and do the work yourself to find out what's going on within yourself it's do it yourself and that's the main thing